Hello everyone, this video introduces an immunological technique called radioimmunoassay, or RIA. RIA is a technique used to determine the concentration of a specific antigen or antibody in a sample. It involves the use of an antibody labeled with a radioactive isotope that binds to an unlabeled antigen, and the amount of bound antigen is detected by measuring the radioactivity of the isotope. The radioactivity of the labeled antigen can be detected and quantified to determine the concentration of the unlabeled antigen in the sample. These antigens can be any substance, such as hormones, serum proteins, drug molecules, etc. It is highly sensitive and can detect as little as 0.001 micrograms of antigen per milliliter of sample. Based on the principles of immunology and radioactive measurement, RIA is widely used in medical diagnosis biochemical research, and drug development, among other fields. Assuming we have a serum sample and want to determine the concentration of a specific antigen A in it, we need three things. The first is a monoclonal antibody A that can bind to the antigen A present in the sample. These antibodies are typically prepared through hybridoma technology. The second necessary thing is a radioactive isotope labeled antigen where some parts of antigen A are composed of a radioactive isotope such as tritium or iodine-125, so that it emits radiation such as gamma or beta. Finally, the same unlabeled antigen A in its original form is also required. In the first step, take a microplate and coat it with a monoclonal antibody. Then, add an excess concentration of the radioactive isotope labeled antigen to the well. What happens if the concentration remains high? Due to the presence of the large amount of antigen, all the antigen binding sites of the antibody will be saturated with antigen, leaving no free antibody available. As you can see, some radioactive isotope labeled antigens remain unbound to the antibody. In the next step, unbound antigens are removed by washing. Now, one well is coated with the antibody and all the antibodies have bound to the radioactive isotope labeled antigen. Therefore, let us assume that the content of the antibody or radioactive substance is 100%, as all the antibodies have bound to the labeled antigen, which is crucial. Next, a small amount of known concentration of unlabeled antigen, such as 1 nanogram, is added to the well. This addition causes competition between the labeled and unlabeled antigens to bind to the antibody and this competition is proportional to the concentration of unlabeled antigen added to the well. Since we have added only one nanogram of antigen, the competition will be relatively low, and a small amount of labeled antigen will be removed from the antibody, and its position will be replaced by the unlabeled antigen. After this step, the well is washed again to remove any unbound antigen, whether labeled or unlabeled. What is the situation now? The presence of unlabeled antigen reduces the amount of labeled antigen bound to the antibody, so the amount of radioactive material on the antibody is no longer 100%. Next, we can gradually increase the concentration of the unlabeled A antigen, which will compete with the radiolabeled antigen for binding to the monoclonal antibody. At this point, we can measure the amount of radiolabeled antigen bound to the monoclonal antibody and compare it to the concentration of the added unlabeled antigen A to determine the concentration of antigen A in the sample. If we repeat the entire process, but first increase the concentration of unlabeled antigen, for example to 2 nanograms, what will happen? Yes, if the concentration of the unlabeled antigen is increased to 2 nanograms in the next experiment, the radioactivity will further decrease and be proportional to the concentration of the unlabeled antigen added to the well. This is because a higher concentration of unlabeled antigen will lead to more competition for binding sites with the labeled antigen, resulting in more displacement of the labeled antigen and further reduction of the radioactivity. The extent of this reduction depends on the specific characteristics of the antigen-antibody interaction and the concentration of the labeled antigen. However, it can be expected that the higher concentration of unlabeled antigen 
the more intense the competition and the lower the observed radioactivity. Therefore, if the radioactivity decreases to 90% for 1 nanogram, it may decrease to 80% for 2 nanograms, and to 70% for 3 nanograms. For example, 60, 50, 40, 30. This is just an example. The actual values may vary. Now let me tell you that there is a relationship between the addition of unlabeled antigen to the well and the radioactivity, which we can plot on a linear graph using the data we have collected. However, please remember that we have not yet used the sample, so next we need to determine the concentration of antigen A present in the sample. We need to repeat all the steps again, starting with taking a microplate, coating it with the monoclonal antibodies, and then adding excess radio-labeled antigen. But this time, we won't add unlabeled antigen. Instead, we'll add the sample. Yes, we'll use the sample to replace the unlabeled antigen that we added before. See, there is an A antigen present in the sample, but we don't know the concentration. And they will compete with the radio-labeled antigen and remove it from the antibody. Now we check the radioactivity. For example, the radioactivity on the antibody is now 40%. And we know that if we add this sample, it will lower the radioactivity to 40%. We mark this value on the standard curve, like the one below, which will tell us the concentration is 6 nanograms. In simple terms, radioimmunoassay relies on the principle of competitive detection, where the radioactive antigen serves as a tracer that competes with the non-radioactive antigen to bind to a specific antibody. If the patient sample contains a large amount of unlabeled antigen, the radioactivity generally decreases with increasing antigen concentration, and a good curve can be obtained. By extrapolating this curve, we can understand the concentration of the antigen in the patient sample and obtain an accurate concentration value based on the standard curve. Therefore, if the concentration is high, the radioactivity will be very low, or the rate of decrease in radioactivity will be very high. And if the antigen concentration is low in the patient sample, the extent of the decrease in radioactivity will not be that significant. Thus, the higher the percentage decrease in radioactivity, the more quantitatively we can measure the presence of the antigen. In summary, RIA is a highly useful technique that provides quantitative information about biomolecules in many different applications. Thank you for watching.